Today, we're gonna to talk all about how to make money, save money, and also what to do when you don't believe in yourself. This is the Startup Uncut, and you're here with me, Jada Wangza, and we're gonna dive right in. Rizwan Balu asks, what is the story of PBJ itself? So the PBJ story started in 2017. I remember I was in Spain with my business partner, which you'll later find out who it is. My business partner says, Jade, you have an audience on YouTube. What are you going to do with it? And I didn't really think much about it. I thought this YouTube thing was going to be just set. And I realized I need to do something more. So the story of PBJ was really wanting to leverage and create a product that was able to help others on a different level that just consuming a video would. I really wanted it to take to the next level because I knew that my goal and my mission in life has been always to help people take their passion into purpose. My story, you know, starts out being a musician. I remember I would go to school and people would laugh when I would want to do a creative field because they're saying you can never make money from that. And I said, fuck that shit. So I wanted to create a product that changed the way people thought about passion and, you know, hobbies. And you can actually make a living off of it using education, using tools like that make you consistent. And we wanted to build that technology behind that. So, I mean, the conversation really was through my childhood and with my business partner in 2017. Andrew Trapman Trading us, where do I invest? Well, right now we don't have a Kickstarter, but I think we should. Okay, if you would like to invest in PBJ, I will link below our GoFundMe and you can add whatever you want and that would be amazing. We would truly appreciate it and we'll add you to the Hall of Fame of PBJ if you decide to invest in our ideas. I never thought about that. Thank you, Andrew. We'll add a, we'll add a link below. <laughs> Karen Montemayor asks, have you ever thought of doing a TED Talk? <gasps> I'd love to do a TED talk. Do you guys think you would watch? Like if you guys could literally bombard their comment section on their recent posts and tag me and say that you guys want them, want me to talk, I would be floored. That would be crazy. Let me know if you guys want to see me on a TED talk. We'll talk about the influencer space and I'll shout you out. Bearness effect asks, is the site written in Django? <laughs> I don't know that question. Bro, I'm not a computer scientist. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that, but I'll get back to you if I do. Mauro Smith asks, I don't get it, Jay. Is this a joke? Is it? <laughs> My non-traditional life asks, why did you drop out of high school? It's not that I decided to drop out of high school. I just stopped showing up. So I think that means you just leave school. Like, I didn't sign any papers. I didn't sign any ritual forms. I literally just stopped going. I'm pretty sure that was illegal. I remember the school called my mom to go to court. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah, I just stopped showing up to school because I was like taking meetings, going on clients, traveling. And there was a point where I just slowly stopped showing up. So yeah, that's what happened. A lot of questions we got was asking like, how expensive was it to build? You know, tell us about how much money you made, how much, a lot of people were asking like, how much initial money did you start to invest? Like, did you take a loan? There was a lot of questions about financials. So let me tell you something. When I started PBJ, I was 16 years old. Is that crazy? So I didn't even have a fucking credit card. I don't have credit. I still don't have credit. So the answer is I did not take a loan. I had 200, like $300 in my bank account. And when I first started PBJ, I made YouTube videos. So I created the audience first. I guess my initial investment was buying the camera to film videos upon. So I remember my parents helped me out on that, but I did not take a loan. The second thing is why was money tight? I think the biggest thing you guys have to understand is initially PBJ was going to be its own standalone app where you get videos, it's, its own interface, it's custom. We were going to do that. It was going to be its whole thing and you can get it at the app store. The problem was it was going to be very expensive to fund. If you guys don't know, building an app, at least the one that I wanted to build, was estimated to be around $200,000 in overall cost. That's talking about, you know, programmers. That's talking about like designing, testing, you know, employees. It's not cheap to make an app, at least the one I created. There's so many of you guys who are super, super sweet that's saying, Jade, you can totally get a f people on Fiverr. You can get just like cheap people to make it. <laughs> I wish like it was like that. Like I'm, I'm very aware that that's an option, but just understand that you can build, you can build any app, but I didn't want to build just a app because I already knew YouTube could resurface content. You guys maybe will see in the next episodes what I was really trying to build. The reason why I didn't go with the Fiverr route is because yes, I could get someone cheap, but if I just build a lot of cheap half-assed products, I will burn more money out of wasted time and energy 
versus doing the right market research and building up correctly. Because building an app is like, you need to have really good foundation. I'm not very technology savvy, but what my business partner has really clearly said is like, if you have a crappy foundation, you don't build the infrastructure, for example, to handle a hundred thousand users. And it's just only, it will crash every thousand users. Like when you are like, you know, having tons of people, you're going to, it's going to blow up more money in the future. So I'm just thinking more long-term, if that makes sense. And I'm floored by your guys' sweet, sweet comments, but I'm, very confident my biggest advice is like if you have a long-term vision build a long-term product so in regards to the app i realized it was going to cost a lot of money and i didn't have the full market fit before i wanted to launch so that's why we actually start to build it on facebook messenger and facebook messenger is basically where we build chat bots so you're able to get content through messages so imagine someone texting you but it's a robot it's a you know custom person we kind of built using automation and AI. So that's what PBJ is currently built on. So when we get ready for the actual app, we have an exact idea of what the product we want to build. There's like no point in building a fucking app if you don't know if it's going to work. There was a comment that basically also said like, Jade, you would you built this company in three days. How could you? Guys, I actually spent like almost two years on this. I just made it three days for the video so you would be entertained. So. There you go. <laughs> My biggest advice for anyone watching the series is to know, understand that I'm gonna fail a lot. And I hope by sharing my failures, my mistakes, that you guys learn something new and inspires you to become an artist, become that musician. I hope you realize when you are in those dark moments, you know that you're not alone, that I'm here for you and that you can do anything you put your mind to. You just gotta believe in it. I know that's super cheesy, but if I don't believe in myself, I know no one will. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I'll see you guys in episode two, and make sure you comment below and leave us a question for the next episode of The Startup Uncut. Thank you, guys. I love you. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, just comment below. I'll see you very soon, and thank you so much for watching.